Welcome to this Getting Started with SharePoint Framework Extensions tutorial series. And this is tutorial three, deploy your extensions to SharePoint, um, also known as Hello World Part Three. So we continue with Hello World Parts One and Two in one part one, we created the solution. In part two, we modified the application, customize it to actually be aware of page placeholders and modifying or adding information to those placeholders. And in part three, we're actually gonna then deploy the solution on SharePoint and making sure that it's running uh, uh, nicely in, in the context of a site as well, not just in a debugging mode, uh, even though we kind of serve still, for, uh, still the content from a local host, but also deploying of the file to the app catalog and making sure that the default settings and configurations in as part of the installation of the extension to the site are properly done. This video has been recorded in January 2020 and it is using SharePoint Framework version 1.10. So if you're using a new version of SharePoint Framework, there might have been small uh, changes on the on the documentation or, or settings. So please have a look on the, the written format of the tutorial, which is always kept the most up to date uh, based on any changes which might happen after the video has been uh, created. Now let's actually move back on our solution structure. So let's jump to our Windows 10 machine where we are in the middle of testing the extensions or we tested the extension as part of the uh, part two. And now we start actually packaging the extensions. And there's a few different options uh, which we can use for the packaging of the extensions and making sure that everything is working properly. So I'm gonna close up some of the files and clean up the, the process slightly. Let's go to the console. I'm gonna clean up this one as well. And let's go to our uh, actual solution code. So in part two, we modified the code. We are now taking advantage of placeholders. We tested out using the share of JSON, but let's actually modify this in a way that we set the settings properly whenever the solution is going to be installed on the site. So if we go on the SharePoint folder, we can actually find two different XML files here. And two, both of these XML files have a quite specific meaning. So first of all, the elements XML file is used by default and based on the default settings of the solution whenever we explicitly install this solution to an existing site. So we're not going to use any tenant deployment option. We're not going to use tenant deployment, uh, tenant wide deployment of extensions. We're going to explicitly install the solution to a site. And as part of that installation process to the site level, we actually apply the custom action element. So what's going to happen behind of the scenes is that in the web object, which is the site in SharePoint, which is slightly confusing, but that it's the terminology, um, is a user custom action collection. And in the user custom action collection, we're going to add a new entry uh, with the title location, with a specific location uh, entry, with a client side component ID and client side properties uh, information. And obviously the client side component ID is pointing to the client side, uh, the unique manifest ID of our extension. So let's actually double check that one out. So if we go back on the source file and we go back on the manifest file, we can see that this ID is 7A8 and ends on EE. And if we go back on the elements XML file, we can actually see that it's a 7A8 and stops in EE. So we know that it's the same ID. The second entry there is a client side component properties entry, which can be used then to configure the instance the properties for the particular instance where it's being uh, where it's being executed so in this case uh, it's still using the default property value not the updated property value which we used or changed within our code because in the code we actually changed the properties to be called top and bottom and we haven't updated this properly so let's actually do that let me get the updated uh, configuration for this one which is then matching our properties. So I'm going to paste in this one uh, directly from the documentation. So we can actually see that the top equals uh, top equals uh, top area of the page, and bottom equals in quotes bottom area of the page. And they have to be encoded not in the most previous thing necessarily to to configure, uh, but that's a developer time time thing. So none of the end users have to understand anything out of that. Now, the second thing actually what's what's in the folder uh, is a client side installs XML. So this is actually quite interesting scenario as well. And this client side um, side components instance would give us the option of deploying this extension 
across the tenant potentially automatically. So um, this one basically gives you the option of, of saying that, hey, I'm going to make sure that this extension, whenever it's going to be added on the app catalog, it's going to be activated across all of the sites in a tenant. Well, technically, you can, you can actually filter that on a template type or a few other, other settings as well. But in the case of our tutorial, we're not going to actually spend time on actually uh, using the client-side component instance. So we're going to deploy the extension explicitly on a site level. So that's why let's actually modify slightly the settings. So let me go back on the configuration file where we have the bucket solution which defines the structure and let's get rid of the client side instance XML because we don't actually want to use this. And that means that we're not then packaging that as part of the SPPKG file which is going to be generated as app extension SPPKG. So quite simple from that perspective. So let's actually test out things. So let me actually go back on the command line. Let's run a call per bundle. So we're going to, well, technically bundle the, the extension. We didn't do any actual changes on the extension, but uh, it's good to have call bundle executed there always. And then do a call uh, package solution whenever the bundling is fully completed. There we go, package solution. So we're going to actually create then the SPPKG file and we can again see the SharePoint solution folder getting generated there in any second. There we go. And there's the, the solution folder and there's our app extension that the SPPKG file as defined in the packet solution JSON file. And that's the one which we actually going to then go and install to our tenant. So let's do that. So let me actually, uh, first of all, I want to reveal that in Explorer. There we go. And let me go to my tenant and let's jump to a app catalog. App catalog site collection and apps for SharePoint. And I have some existing uh, solutions here. Then let's not worry about those. Those are from the other tutorials. And let's actually track and drop this app extension SPPKT file to the app catalog. And obviously, we're going to, again, typical process, um, do you trust the app extensions? By the way, you, you definitely should uh, trust and validate the solutions which you're adding to your production, but that's a separate discussion as well. So let's actually deploy stuff. Uh, it is pointing still to the local host, and that is by design, because we want to make sure, uh, well, we first want to test the basic process uh, of the installation and configuration, and then the final step is actually do the full deployment. But I know we can say that the app extension client solution is installed on a tenant, so it's actually available to be installed on a site level. So let's go back on our group site. We're going to use the group site as the example. There's no application placeholders. There's nothing uh, actually running in here. Before I actually install the application placeholder, let me go to the console and let me run a call up serve no browser. So that will make sure that my local host is now serving the files which will be soon requested by the browser. So there we go. So now we're ready to go and we're serving the files uh, from the local host. So now we're able to then go to the site content and we wanna install and explicitly the application or solution to the site. And we can find the app extension client side solution available from the app catalog. So let's install that. And that's going to take again a while, but it doesn't take too long and we can actually refresh the page and we are, there was already a small flash on things. No, actually that's just the loading thing. Refreshing, refreshing, installation still ongoing. This actually is a one-time schedule operation behind of the scenes, so it, it's not precisely always known how many seconds uh, it will actually take to install the, the solution to a site. Still, oh, now we can actually see something already happening. We can still say that the solution is still in the process of the final step getting installed to the site, but we can already see the top placeholder being rendered and the bottom placeholder being rendered properly. And if I go to the home page, it doesn't really matter where I'm actually in the site. We can see the placeholders getting rendered in a list or in the libraries or in the modern pages. So all of that is happening as design. So there is there it is um, our application placeholder with a custom properties which we configured as part of the install installation instructions in the element XML file. This in here is now getting served automatically in the site level.
Um, but we're still using the local host. So for a time being, we're actually still serving the stuff from a local host. So let's actually do the final step and do the, the full set of configurations in a tenant. So making sure that our Office 365 CDN is running and making sure that everything is up and running on that perspective in the tenant and do that in the part four. So one more part and we will be fully completed on deploying our first application customizer to our modern SharePoint experiences. But let's do that in the next video.